All right, we are live in Austin. We made it. We made it. Uh, not to the place we wanted to be, but uh, a great place nonetheless with some great folks. So we were planning to do a bigger event at VUCA with no power. That was hard. It's icy down here. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, um, we are doing a little session here under Growth Lessons, which is uh, an interesting initiative from Elevate Demand. We'll give Elevate a little bit of love here. But before we do that, just really grateful, Cassie and Dana, that you guys are chatting with us. Jay over here, he gets a little bit of credit because he's actually the guy who um, paid for all the stuff that never happened, you know? <laughs> so he's the, he's the real winner here. I guess on a slightly more serious note, I think this conversation about narrative messaging, whatever we want to call it, and its role in driving growth is something that you can really speak to because you do that for so many companies all the time. So if you've done a lot more of that work than I have because I've only been kind of the in-house guy, right? And so it'd be great to get some of your perspectives on this stuff. But, you know, it can't be all you. It can't be all you all the time. Uh, I think we'll start with, uh, with the ladies, with Cassie and Dana. And where I'd like to start is really around, I guess, the challenges of this stuff. We're talking about coming up with a fundamentally different story around your business and then somehow getting everybody internally to buy into that and then somehow getting that out the door and making real impact with that through all the channels that we have at our disposal. None of it is easy. A lot of times it goes wrong. For me, it's gone wrong more than it's gone right, I feel. How about for you guys? Are you comfortable sharing a few, uh, few stories of when it's been either particularly hard or just not quite panned out? Because maybe we can start there and then we can build ourselves up again. Who wants to start? I've been through the, the narrative uh, arc I guess, of implementing narrative at a couple companies now. You know, it's never, it's never easy. And I think um, one of the biggest things I've learned is it's not a marketing activity. It's, it's really about the company strategy. And it's, it depends on the alignment between marketing, sales, and product, really. And alignment between your company vision and where that's going. Because as soon as it becomes, you know, all about what marketing's doing and a marketing story, it stops to have the same impact on, you know, where's our roadmap going? And, like, how does it align to your narrative? And, you know, how are sales telling the story? Are they equipped to do so? Um, I've seen that go off the rails when even you're just aligned with sales, but product is, like, off doing their own little thing over here. I'm not going to ask you to name names. We won't do that here. But yeah, it's, it's fair to say that like, if you've been through it a few times, you've been through a few real challenges, right? Like That's just how it goes. And that's fair. I think it's one of those important things that I think we all need to start from, which is no matter what people say about this stuff, there is no easy, quick way to just like solve this. Like, don't listen to really anybody, myself included, you know, if, if the message is like, yeah, just do this, this, and this. There is no one clear way of just doing it and it works out. How about you, Cassie? Have you had some challenges with this? Of course, of course. Yeah, so I do remember, <clears throat> you know, one of the companies that I was at, um, we hired a branding agency to come in and, you know, do the, do the research for us and talk to our customers and, you know, build something out. And it was beautiful. And marketing across the company, this was a big global company, you know, across the company, marketing had this reputation then of we just changed our colors. And we, you know, everybody talked about this one icon that we added. And that was what people saw of it. And so, Dana, I loved what you said about it has to really, you know, be the strategy of the company that's driving and everybody kind of aligned with what does this actually mean for the business, for the company, for all of us that are, you know, in those functional roles. Um, because a lot of times marketing does get the bad rap then for like we're just changing the colors and we change the, you know, the tagline to the from this to this or 
we redid the homepage of the website again. And what is it doing for us other than, you know, it just looks pretty and we're, um, I heard this phrase a long time ago, but we're moving deck chairs on the, on the Titanic at this point, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. is it really doing anything for us? Or are we just like n not doing a great job at all uh, across the board? So, you know, it is really hard. It's really hard to a, get right with your external audience, but it's really hard to get right internally as well and get that momentum behind you. So everybody's moving in the same direction. It's always interesting, the internal, um, perception of marketing. Um, and I always like to kind of assess out like the executive team and say like, what, where, where are they on the continuum of like, you know, arts and crafts department through strategic the driver of the business. And, um, and that always informs like the way I talk about the narrative and the way I present it to the company. Um, in this last one, um, that I was talking about earlier, I literally presented it every week for an entire quarter before I started hearing people say it. And then I was like, okay, good. Now I can keep going. And like, and it took that much repetition. Cause again, it was a global company with, you know, people across, you know, nine time zones listening to this. And I probably sounded like the biggest broken record only to me. And, it, and, and I think we forget that as marketers that like our audience is that times 20. Like how hard is it to get that message in front of them? I think it's a helpful reminder because we've probably all felt like that broken record. And that's when you just got to keep going, you know, because it's just so, so clear when you look back, you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't say it enough times. Like it's so we can talk about a few of the areas where where it does get tricky specifically. I do think in moving from, oh, now we've figured out something, now we have this story, and now we're going to actually roll it out, but we first need to get everybody internally on board. Like, just that part is massively challenging because of the effort that it takes, right? It's just, it, and it's not just sales enablement or some, like, simple stuff. This is, like, really tricky tricky business. Um, and before we move to the external stuff, I think there's a little bit more on the internal side that we can all touch on, right? Like you mentioned, you you kind of sniff out where does the leadership team overall uh, stand, but the CEO too plays a big, big role, right? And then you have, you mentioned product, you mentioned, you know, sales leadership, et cetera. What else have you guys experienced around just dealing internally and what are some, I guess, lessons that could maybe help folks about how to approach this stuff in, in any kind of direction up to CEO, sideways to anybody else? Got some thoughts on it? Yeah, I think for me, what's worked is just like you said, Dana, it's the constant conversation. It's being really proactive about going out. And, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, how we're marketing the business, but it's also we have to market marketing internally. And so how do you create not just your campaign for external, but also your campaign for internal? Finding who are those um, champions that are, you know, in any functional area that you need to be aligned with. And it doesn't matter what level they're at because you need to have those influencers that are going to, you know, double down on your message or help to share it. Or, you know, on the opposite side, give you the feedback that they're hearing, like from, customers, you know, whether it's a support person or um, a salesperson or customer success, you know, coming back and saying, hey, here's what I'm hearing or here's a piece of feedback. And it's like, oh, wow, I never thought about that. And that actually is worth us reiterating something around um, or, you know, redefining it a little bit or, you know, so I think it is, it's finding those, those champions internally. Um, <clears throat> it's, you know, doubling down on the message and continuing to reiterate it and as many places and many times as it takes. Um, and then, you know, there's some creative things that you can do too, like at sales kickoff, you know, always having something big launch around a, an event like sales kickoff or um, a new product launch or, you know, I was in an industry that focused on intellectual property and there's a world IP day. We would launch big things internally around world IP day as well mm -hmm. as externally. So, you know, what are those kind of milestones that you can launch around too, just like you would externally and a, a big external facing campaign too. So thinking about it like a marketer, instead of just like focusing on your external and just like hoping that the internal side of things just works. And for me, I always think about the 
not only the externally position of your company, but the internal positioning of what you're doing. So thinking about the why first and, you know, cause I think a lot of times as marketers, we even get caught up in the tactics instead of into the strategy. And then you end up presenting tactics and you're like, we launched a new website. Well, no, we launched a narrative. The website was like, because we launched this narrative, because we launched this new movement, this category. And so like really taking the time to reframe the why as what you're doing instead of the what, um, so that we don't get also caught up in the, like, did we do it metrics and like the, all of the traps that you get into of, you know, checking the box and moving on and forgetting the, the bigger reason as to why we even did those things. I've made this mistake. Um, what feels like a million times when I re reflect back on it is like, the updates we constantly give internally ends up really just being about tactics. And nobody cares about one individual tactic because everybody knows that one individual tactic doesn't do shit. Like that's just the truth. Oh, we have a new ad campaign with some new ad creative. We just published a new blog post or like we have this video. Like any individual piece of anything isn't what's going to change the game. Everybody knows that. And so while companies' criticism of marketing is typically quite unfair, um, you know, we're not helping our cause by reporting on these individual tactical things. So that's a good one for all of us. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a big reminder for me. Going back a little bit, like we should also talk about you know, what it's like to get it out to the real world. But I think backing up a little bit and saying, okay, we've, we've said narrative a few times here. What, what exactly do we mean by that, right? Because you have positioning or product positioning, which typically ends up being a story about the stuff that you have to offer and why it matters and all that stuff. Great, you know. A narrative is more the story of your buyer, right? Like what's going on in the world of the buyers. Um, Jay, you've talked a lot about the shift, you know, not unlike what Andy Raskin has shared. I think because you work on multiple of these a time, like it would be great to hear how you think about like what it is and how you actually get to it with clients. Like how do you do a brand narrative with a client? What is it is... It's an articulation of how the, the world is changing, basically, and how your company fits into that change and can enable change and be the change for a buyer. So, I mean, one of the biggest things I've learned from Jay is like not necessarily starting with that change, but starting with the buyer and making sure that like the way you get out of the gates is something that they head not to. That they're like, it's, it's acknowledging something that they kind of already know, but maybe haven't quite articulated or quite put their finger on. And that's, and that's different because most people market to how they wish that buyers felt. And it's a very, it's a, it's a big distinction and it's hugely important in getting your message right. Because if you just, if you're just like, oh, we're, we're marketing to pain points and the narrative just ends up being like a brush stroke across all your pain points with a little bit of a story in there. And it's like, that's not, that's not it. Um, and I feel like that I've seen that a lot with companies where they're like, I wish you felt this way. Um, but what you really, it's, it's really this before and after state where the before is, is true and authentic and usually voice of the customer. Some of my best messaging has been written by customers. And then figuring out a way to, to weave that into everything so that your the architecture of your product marketing and setting up the way that you're talking about your solution even fits into that narrative so that, you know, it's all piecing together and forming like a bigger picture. For me, narrative like simply is like the old way, new way lens that we view the world. But the old way for us is what does our buyer believe right now? What's their current operating narrative? That's what we call the brand narrative. Like what's their, their operating narrative they believe about winning in our role. That's where we, we want to resonate with where they are at in their head, where that inkling feeling is almost right. It's here's an inkling I have about the world. Like I think you're, we've talked about at length, right? Like drifted that so well, six, seven years ago when they came with conversational marketing, like when they finally said that narrative, it's like, oh shit, why am I still marketing this way? Right. Like it wasn't like they changed all our minds about marketing. Like we kind of knew it and they just finally put it into a word or words. It's like, oh, yeah, I, I've known this. Right. 
And then essentially the narrative is, hey, we're going to show you what people believe their new operating narrative about winning. Right. And we haven't even gotten into product yet, which is, again, the mistake people make. Like, oh, I'm going to show them why our product's great. Or, well, let's just show them a new way to win. And then maybe how our product can facilitate that new way. Right. And I love what you said. They didn't change the way people thought about marketing. Right. And and that's what people miss about narrative is that they're like, oh, like if only they felt this way. And then they craft the whole thing about it. Tell us a little bit more about the process of putting on it together. Me and Dana, actually, we have, sl- I don't say different beliefs. We agree, but we still tackle it differently. Yes. I don't know if I can go first. Yeah. Um, because Dana's going to bring the very traditional Andy Raskin-ish approach to this, right? And while I, I think he's probably smarter than me, like, I don't got time for that. Actually, like, as you two were talking, I mean, I was thinking about this in my head. I was going, all right, Dana just spent a quarter internally just trying to get people to buy in to start saying it. I already wasted a quarter now, right? And I don't even have people fully saying the story. And, like, right, we all know as a marketing lead, like, time is against you very quickly. Um, and so that's where I used to be very much like we need everybody. I'm not there as much anymore, which is, uh, we need to create our own momentum and how can I go out with the narrative as quickly as possible via marketing to create our own momentum that will build, I think, eventually alignment with product, alignment mm-hmm. with sales, alignment with the CEO, because time again is working against me. So our approach really is let's build out again, what we think the narrative is. We do that by what we call a start here page. Um, and we launched that. We put it right prominently on the website. We actually start running ads to it. And our job is to get as much feedback as quickly as possible via just pushing it, getting market insights, uh, feedback that we're hearing uh, as buyers consume that content. And that's really how we approach it. I don't think it's a marketing issue. I just think there's a, a time component that I'm not, if I can't build an alignment internally quickly, like we have to move quickly ourselves. Because I just think there's so many marketing leaders that are just up against that brick wall, like even messaging for some, I think is a warm and fuzzy website color button thing. Like why are we spending (laughs) times on a narrative? Why don't we go out and why aren't we just talking about our product? Right. We have a great product. We just need to go tell the market about that. Well, that's not how it works. Well, so the thing I didn't say when I was talking about my internal alignment was we were testing all of this already at the same time. Jay and I had a start here page that we were testing. We had a landing page. We had messaging. We had it in the sales deck. And it was kind of a parallel path because we didn't have time to waste. But I also knew that the internal alignment was so important that it was like, here's the launch. I, you know, I started probably six weeks before we actually got it on the website with the internal messaging. And the whole next quarter was every week. So it's it's kind of a it's kind of like understanding both. Like you can't wait for every person in the company to be able to articulate your message to, to, to test it or to to launch it. There has to be this like give and take this happy medium. What I would love to have, right. Is, Hey, we're building this narrative. How can I get sales involved in the same story? So I can, again, it's about just the feedback loop to me as fast as possible. I want insights Mm -hmm. quickly because I don't have time. Um, and then can I gain momentum and can I get product involved as we're gaining those insights to build alignment, um, as we, cause it's just, it's just a funny thing to say, but that's what people want actually. Right. Like this is such a big bet for people and they get scared. Like, Oh, we're going to do this narrative. And then I spent a quarter and now it's not even resonating. And now what's going on? Like, we just don't have that time. That's why, like, that's the perfect way to do it. In my opinion is, Hey, we want to start here page sales. Like we have this deck. We want you to start talking to some of the prospects with this story as well. We want to get some of the insights you're hearing back the ultimate way. Well, we haven't talked about research, which is the most important critical part, which is actually talking to customers before you even write the thing, Um, which, you know, is, is like a given, but and also interwoven into the testing. But I mean, if, if you skip that, you obviously do risk the you have a huge risk of kind of doing that quarter of work and then having nothing to show for it. So I'm curious how you guys, like when, so you're, you're getting the feedback, you have the start here page, you're doing all of this research that feeds into that and you're, you know, kind of testing and iterating. When do you stop iterating and say like, this is the message? Like, you know, you've wasted a quarter, you know, doing it internally, but you can also waste multiple quarters continuing to iterate. And then you have all these different versions of things that people are using as well. So I'm curious how that's kind of come up in your project. 
Dana, I even think the first one we worked on was slightly that way, right? Like we paced the butt, it wasn't fully where we wanted. We actually tweaked yep. two or three times to get further. Like some things we see is uh, tremendous engagement on the narrative page, which leads to inbounds and things like that, or the start here page, we call it. Um, so those are those are some of it. The, the one thing I've at least in the last two years that I've just kind of accepted is this idea that narratives are changing faster, actually, than they have historically. I think you could create a story and a narrative and you could live with that for two, three, four or five years. I don't know if that's the case anymore. And I, I do think you should be continually validating your narrative throughout a year and running experiments to make sure uh, that it still resonates. Because I think we talk about product market fit, but I think message market fit is a real thing where that story can change faster. I mean, how many narratives probably just got blown up in the past two months because how much the world has changed for buyers? For me, the narrative is core. Yep. And it's the core thing of who you are and why you're there. What's the major problem that you're solving for your buyers? And I think the messages around that can continue to change. And based on what problems or, you're right, like economic pressures, what macro you know forces are coming in um, to have your customers and prospects change what they're interested in or where their budgets are going to go this year. So I think the messages change, but does the core narrative change? I wouldn't say the core narrative changes yeah. that frequently, um, but how you articulate it, maybe different buckets, how you talk of it. I haven't had an example where we've fundamentally in like six months changed a whole core narrative unless it was initially like the wrong bet. It's hard, like even the Elevate narrative like completely changed about six months ago. And it, it's even hard for me because what's interesting that I'm noticing in kind of a stupid way is the narrative I changed from, everybody just changed theirs to and latched onto and took, right? And then I start second guessing myself and there is almost in a narrative, some belief with it. Like, I just really believe it's right and I'm going to stick to it and I'm not going to stop it. And uh, I think that's just a small part of it. I think a lot of times marketers think messaging is more static than it is. Um, and I also think about like different points of messaging change at different frequencies. So like it is way harder for me to change my sales deck than my LinkedIn ad. And so, and, and just admitting that and saying that that's okay. And that like, I'm going to actually inform how I change my sales deck be, based on, you know, probably 12 or 15 iterations of LinkedIn ads. And like, that's going to get me to a point where I'm like, oh, I have an incremental change. That's an evolution to that. That's not a test that I feel really confident in that I've got, had some buyer conversations. I've probably tested it with my star rep um, before like rolling it out. Like, and that's probably more of a quarterly thing or ha twice a year versus other things where, you know, you can update your, with a new product launch, for example. If we're thinking about narrative and we're just constantly like kind of rehashing or something, then something is up, right? Because whether you believe that the story is the strategy or not, they certainly are close at the very least. And so they, they shouldn't, you know, shouldn't fundamentally change. Um, what I'm seeing is, yes, the need for different flavors of it potentially, right? And um, I think the the days of like, well, if it's on the homepage, if it's reflected in the homepage and then just like our ads are changing some colors, then like we're, we're doing enough to, you know, pat ourselves on the back. Those days are definitely gone, right? Like I think we have to be more creative about how we bring it to life through all the different channels um, you know, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's a fair one. I, I wanted to go there to this whole thing of like bringing it to life or making it happen. You know, it shows up, of course, in the website, it shows up in sales decks, it shows up in content and shows up, you know, even at events, et cetera. You know, what is your guys' experience with, you know, seeing something actually, get taken all the way to where, yeah, wow, we're now producing content consistently that's really delivering on this and we're seeing the impact or, you know, wow, yeah, like now the sales deck really worked and we had to go through these, you know, iterations, like just that whole process of like now moving it beyond just the website, but into different ways of, of having it connect. Uh, what's worked for you guys there? I think, you know, I'm in a situation right now where we're kind of like halfway through this, right? Where I think, you know, some of what's working is that we have the entire executive leadership team 
on board with the new narrative, the, the messages that we're using, but nobody else is there yet. Um, but we are, you know, we're testing it through um, all of the different channels. We're in the process of updating all of our assets, but it is like right now where we do have a bunch of different versions. Everybody's using something slightly different, you know, so there's the tactical aspect of how do you manage that stuff, which I think is all like, that's kind of the easy part of it. So that's why I say like, we're kind of like halfway through where I feel like we've gotten some good momentum. Executive team was on board, which was a big part of it, you know, defining like what are our foundational items that we need to have reflect the new narrative, the new messages. How do we, you know, continue to, iterate and change on those as our customer pain points do change as well. I think those are the big things, you know, it's just like making sure that it's all kind of coming together. Well, I think less about like, what is the success internally? And like, when do you start hearing it back to you? Because when I know, I know it's working when I start hearing our message coming back to us on our first sales call. If I'm listening to that sales recording or on the call and I'm hearing our messaging on our buyer's lips, I'm like, yes, like we've done something like that's that's resonating. Um, and so I'm looking for that. Um, I actually think it's great when competitors copy our messaging because that means we're we're they're they're hearing it. Yeah. They're they're taking notice. They see something changing. Um, when you start hearing things on, you know, any of the analysts and review sites and things like that, these are like market signals back to you that you've done something right. Narrative is almost essentially just getting like taken and stolen by competition now, where it's causing that evolution to happen faster where we have to evolve the narrative to a point where it actually sounds different like unless you get really ahead which is harder now um i think that's just kind of number one to think about and then two the sales feedback is like the ultimate goal like um what we're after is we want a prospect to come in and they're speaking some of that language or that story like that's the ultimate thing that you can have happen that's validation for what you're talking about i mean the very first narrative we wrote and launched for us even internally, like that's what happened. They'd be like, oh, I need that thing that you were talking about on that page. And I'm like, holy shit, people are actually seeing this. Or I've had people call me now and they're like, oh yeah, here's our growth hypothesis. And I'm like, like people are actually starting to internalize this stuff and vocalize and use the words and terms that we are as like the ultimate validation for a narrative. We're in 2023 and things are tighter than they've been in a little while. Uh, everything seems challenging, you know, teams and budgets have been stripped and all that stuff. Is it different now? Is this work more challenging this year than let's say the last couple of years? What do we expect uh, through this year? What do we think we need to do on this side this year? Are we doing it for immediate returns or are we investing in the future? thoughts on this type of work in the time that we are in right now? I think this is a huge litmus test for marketing because, you know, we're, we're in a world where budgets are getting cut, everything's getting scrutinized, and the, the historical model of growth at all costs is not going to cut it. There's not going to be the funding for it. There's not going to be the appetite for it. And, you know, you can't just add people. You can't just add BDRs. You can't just add outbound or, you know, do more of the same things. It's really going to come down to understanding, you know, well, first off, do you have product market fit? Because I think that's obvious. That's one of the biggest challenges that people don't say um, enough. Um, and then it's like, and then it's alignment on the, strate the strategy of the company, what between everything from, you know, where are we going? What's the narrative to how are we going to grow? How is that different? And kind of like, what's our unfair competitive advantage in the market? How do we exploit that? And all row in the same direction because, you know, pouring more resources everywhere across the company, um, you know, it might work in some environments, but it's not going to work this year. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be a really hard year. I think that, you know, everything that we're talking about, it's we we know that if you do that, you know, the narrative, the messaging really well on the front end, the research on the front end, that everything else we, we do from, you know, gem demand tactics, putting LinkedIn ads, email, like whatever that's going to be, will work better. But I think what we're going to see this year is a lot of pressure to just 
you know, drive, drive leads. I'm going to use air quotes there because some people don't do, you know, whatever people want to say about it, get meetings, drive pipeline. But I think, you know, whatever you have to do to support the sales motion is, you know, whatever you can get closer to revenue, you have to do first and foremost, because you're not going to have the people or the budget or whatever to do all of the really good foundational work. So I think that that's, What I think we as marketers are going to really be challenged with this year is how do we not balance, but how do we do both at the same time, even though we won't be able to do, you know, the amount of investment in especially the foundational messaging and narrative work that we'd really want to do. So what's good enough this year to to drive the revenue? Well, I think it's also about making sure that everyone's aware of the trade-offs um, between these things. Because I think it's really easy to cut brand. And, you know, it's like, well, yeah, you can just – but, like, what what is what what are you doing then? You know, if you're just – you know, if, and usually brand includes, you know, positioning work and messaging work. Um, so I think, I think it's making tough trade-offs and, you know, being able to articulate that to the board, to the, to this, to your CEO, you know, kind of like how, how can you make, like what's appropriate? How do you, you know, right size things for where you are without, you know, cutting off your nose despite your face? Yeah. I think that point about fully making sure that everybody is aware of what the trade-offs, you know, really are about in the context of how, are we even growing as a business in this season we're in? So, you know, if our primary lever for growth is this, then how are these trade-offs impacting that, et cetera? So, yeah, I think that's where we have to step up maybe even more as marketing leaders to really um, help people understand, you know, what, what, what is involved. And it's not, it's actually not, help people understand the value of marketing. It's help people understand what it takes to drive the kind of growth that the company is looking for and, you know, be smart about the trade-offs that we're all going to face. We are at time, but this is just a preview of what we'll do in person when we come back to Austin. Um, Heather, Katie, we missed you. Um, I'll let anybody have some closing words, though, but we are about to wrap it up. What do you think, Cassie? What do you, what do you want to share with the world? I'm scared to be a marketer this year based on what Jay is saying. <laughs> no, I think it'll be a really good challenge. I am, you know, I think there are going to be some pockets of really creative things that come out of this. Like any, you know, hard time, there's some really cool stuff that usually comes out. So I'm excited to see what that is. Well, I'll, I'll give you a, a bold prediction, which is the companies that continue to invest in narrative and continue to invest in brand this year will see it in 24.